Hey everyone, Dan Q here. Today I'm in uh, Kerbal Space Program 2 and uh, I'm going to try and provide a foolproof way of rendezvous and docking. I've seen some other guides and videos on this and uh, it seems like there are some examples where people are not using all the tools that are available to them in Kerbal Space Program. And if you use everything correctly, you really can take a lot of guesswork out of uh, rendezvousing and docking. So I have a sort of a list of things I want to make some points about. And the, the first one is uh, put, some, put some orientation lights on your spacecraft. Um, the idea here is that, uh, you know, you can, it, it's often the case when you're trying to do the last minute parts of the docking where you're not quite sure what the orientation of the spacecraft is and you're just sort of guessing based on how it's reacting to your inputs. But with these orientation lights, you can know exactly which way you're pointed and you can also switch to the body camera and it will stay aligned with it. So this way, when you're thrusting left or right, you can you know, be sure you know which direction you're facing. Okay, so right now I'm in a basically an arbitrary orbit and I'm trying to rendezvous with this uh, spacecraft over here that's in a higher orbit than I am. <clears throat> and I'm not aligned with the plane, I'm not uh, circularized. Um, it's basically, this is a general approach to rendezvous uh, and docking where you know, your, your inputs, your starting conditions are not necessarily in some neat pattern. You know, you're not trying to launch from the space center into an aligned uh, orbit behind the thing to try to catch up just right. This is a case where you can rendezvous in any condition. And of course there are limits, you know, my <clears throat> plane is off axis by five degrees or something, I'm not quite sure and it would take more fuel in order to align my plane with something that was more divergent. Um, but this general approach will allow you to handle most situations and as long as you kind of follow all the steps you won't find yourself in a position where you're trying to do large maneuvers. So first things first, you know, always uh, circularize your orbit. <clears throat> you know, you can so with these steps, you basically want to take the idealized form of what you're trying to do. And then if you want to get fancy with it later, sure, you know, you can circularize your orbit later or never. But by circularizing first and then aligning plane, you're reducing a lot of variables and a lot of complexity to the rendezvous. So of course, the first thing I'll do then is circularize my orbit. And I'll do that now. Let's see. I need to get to my apoapsis and increase my prograde. I'll do that. Oops, I did not mean to pause. That typically screws stuff up. All right, and the circularization doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. It needs to be within, you know, <laughs> well, that was actually perfect, <laughs> 147 to 147. That's pretty good. Okay, so circularization first. That'll set you up for success later. Next, I'm going to align planes. So uh, actually, before I do anything else, I'm going to set target. <clears throat> Uh, on this other spacecraft here. And also I'm going to go over here to this other spacecraft and set the target as well. And if you do this ahead of time, then you're not kind of struggling with the UI trying to select uh, spacecraft that are, you know, on top of each other. So I'm going to control the second spacecraft now. Uh, looks like this one's already set. But in addition, what I'll do all right, so here's one thing that I see a lot of people missing. When you click on this button right here, when you click on this part of the UI, 
it's switching between <clears throat> two or three things, depending on context. But uh, normally, you always have orbit, and then you have uh, surface, which is for dealing with the uh, aerodynamic uh, systems within, you know, when you're in the atmosphere. Um, but when you set it to target, um, it unlocks some things that I think maybe some people just don't realize. And one of them is that um, you can point directly to it. So right now my spacecraft is going to be pointing sort of through the planet at my other ship there. So there you go. It's pointing through the planet. Um, and the other thing, the other big thing I think, see people missing is at this, uh, this retrograde button. And I will explain more about what that does later, but it's essentially what this enables you to do is to cancel out the relative velocity between you and the target. And it seems to be the most important part of rendezvous that a lot of people aren't getting. Okay, so I've circularized my orbit now. Let me switch back to my main spacecraft. All right, and the next thing I want to do is align planes. <clears throat> and even though it may be tempting to try and uh, burn and increase your orbit to try to rendezvous first, by aligning planes first, you're basically optimizing the distance that you can achieve between you and your target um, in your very first maneuver. So aligning planes, it's not difficult. I'm just going to do it here manually. Uh, this is the way I do it. Some people create a maneuver node. Generally, I find that because of the simplicity of this maneuver, I'll just do it manually. Which is interesting because a lot of people use maneuver node for this step, but not for the uh, transition up into the uh, upper orbit, which is way more important to use the maneuver node for because you need to know the timing of when you want to do the burn. And there's really no way to do that other than to use a maneuver no node and optimize that way. All right, so <clears throat> I'm pointed in the normal vector. And as I approach the DN uh, position here, I turn it on. You have to do it early enough. You can't do it too late. And then you'll see that it kind of starts getting away from you. But you just repeat this process. You go in. Get nice and close. Fire normal. It's getting away from me again. Time warp again. See, I'm already down to, you know, 0, 0.0 is, uh, it's already below the precision the game even displays to you. But you can get extremely precise with this. So you can hear me, like, firing the engines real quick, right? And once it spins around like that, then you know you're pretty much on the dot. All right, so already now I've got a circularized orbit. <clears throat> I'm perfectly aligned with the plane. And now I need to start thinking about how I'm going to increase my orbit in order to rendezvous. And so uh, let me check my recording here. just want to make sure I'm not wasting a whole bunch of time. Looks good. All right, so I want to be slightly behind when I do the firing. I don't know exactly by how much, but um, in the case where these orbits are so close together, I'm guessing it's going to be kind of in this range here. So I'm going to time accelerate. And, uh, <clears throat> and also, I think you know, one of the things about this game is you can use time acceleration to just kind of solve problems that would have, like, don't force yourself into trying to make a maneuver right away. Try to get into the most ideal position. There's really no disadvantage to time warping to some some place in order to make to make it better you know unless you're specifically trying to go for you know a challenge where you're trying to do something in the least amount of you know in game time as possible so i'll create a maneuver node here make sure i'm not skipping anything line plane all right so maneuver to intercept i'm not sure if that many people are comfortable with the maneuver node 
uh, with these maneuver nodes. Um, but if you're not, the game really does get sort of unlocked if you do this. And whereas most people that I've seen simply do a prograde burn to get into the upper orbit and then do corrections once they're up in the up here, uh, the maneuver node is just the kind of the just the prescribed way to do this. Like it's the correct way to do it. Oh shit! I think I <laughs> I think I accidentally grabbed the wrong thing. All right, create a new one. Okay. Little trick here, right click on the rendezvous and it will tell you the distance, okay? Distance from target. So now when I move this stuff around, I can directly control how close I'm gonna get to that target. I'll even play around with the prograde and retrograde here. I'm gonna get it super close. All right, 52 meters, 42 meters. All right, that's damn good, all right? So, definitely use the maneuver direction vector when you do this. You don't wanna be sort of naively prograde or retrograde or anything like that because um, the, the solver actually knows that you're gonna be on this maneuver vector so if you do anything except that, it's going to be inaccurate. All right, so wind up there. Going fast forward. Looks like my burn is going to be 19 seconds. Twenty-two seconds countdown now. And, and just to prove kind of how reliable this is, I'm not even going to be looking at the, um, the map view. I'm just going to do this, and I'm going to turn it on, and I'm going to shut it off exactly when it tells me. Gracias. Ni hao. Boom, it's on. I'm not sure why I heard any kerbals. There's none in there. Three, two, one. Oops, I kind of went over there. You know what? It's not going to even matter, though, because what's going to happen now, I'll go back to the map, get rid of that maneuver node, and you can see, like, I just overshot it <clears throat> horribly, right? Uh, no, that's not true. Not horribly. I'm at 10 kilometers, okay? But now what I'm gonna do, go back to my ship here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put this on prograde, right? And then I'm gonna rotate this around. Hold on, let me get my camera set up here. All right, so remember how we had these orientation lights? Now that I know, now I know that left is just to this red side, green is to this right side. And um, what that means is if I try to do any kind of burning at all right now, like I have a good, and also, you know, you can look at the map too. Sorry, the nav ball. And uh, it, you can kind of get a picture of this stuff in your head. going past it all right so I'm going that way and I'm going towards this rendezvous right and what I can do here is even though I've overshot it once I get my spacecraft kind of lined up in some kind of predictable way then I can go back over to the map view look at the intersection right click on it to get it stuck stickied and uh, I'm gonna turn on my RCS 
and then I'm going to make very small inputs. So I'm going reverse thruster now. And you can see I'm optimizing that distance from target by huge amounts. Like I'm basically fixing it. And I went past it there, right? But that's okay. So I'll get to the forward and reverse thrusters optimized. And then I'll do up and down. So I'll go up. Now I'm getting even closer. So even though that was a terrible burn in terms of, you know, getting it right the first time, I get my spacecraft lined up in a predictable way. And then I just play with the RCS. And I'm not really using that much thrusting or anything. It's not that wasteful. But because I'm so far away from the target, I'm making these huge changes. Okay, getting closer there. Playing with forward and reverse again. Now I'm back under, now I'm at less than 500 meters. 300 meters, 200 meters. Now it's going crazy. <laughs> Seventy six meters, seventy five meters. Okay, that's probably as close as I can get it for now. All right, turning RCS thrusters off. And now I'm just going to go. I'm going to go like halfway there, right? And I'm going to do the exact same thing. Actually, at seventy nine meters, I don't even need to do it again. But the idea here is that you could go halfway to your target and then just do the exact same thing get lined up, get in a, you know, a, a known predictable orientation, then play with the thrusters a little bit and just make it even more perfect. At 79 meters, that's pretty darn good. Let's see if I'll op try to optimize it just a little bit. I don't think I can get better than that just because the... <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, in the current version of KSP2, the precision RCS mode doesn't work, but uh, 88 meters is pretty good. I mean, that means I'm going to be 88 meters away from the, <clears throat> the, the target when I encounter it, which is far better than, you know, any other kind of strategy that I've seen people talk about. So do it this way, you know, do a maneuver node maneuver node first, get close enough, and then just immediately start playing with the RCS. Um, if you can't get it close right away, then you know go about halfway to your destination and then do it again. Um, and the other thing I've heard people say is that the you don't want to be encountering the thing with a really high relative relative speed, right? And that's true to some extent, but the the, reason, the reasons that they, they give are not really the same reasons that I give. You, when they do their encounters, they're doing all this sort of like complex off-axis uh, maneuvering in order to slow down and also redirect them towards the target at the same time. But I'm going to show you my strategy, which is to use the, the retrograde orientation in order to uh, basically negate the speed between you and the target. All right, so I'll do one last RCS optimization here, but at this point, yep, I'm already 83 meters. It's so darn close, all right? So, whoa. The RCS uh, PIDs are not good in KSP2 at the moment. All right, so where's my target? There it is. All right, so here you see I'm closing with the target at this pretty absurd rate. And uh, so I'll click this button over here, get myself on target, and then I'm going to put myself in retrograde. Retrograde plus this being on target 
means that if I burn, all it's going to do is reduce my relative velocity to the target in a, in a linear way. It's basically the exact direction you want to point in order to slow down relative to your target. put myself on auto here. Okay, so kind of hauling ass, but it's not going to matter. In fact, I'm going to forward up a little bit here. I'm going to get within about, about three kilometers or so. I'm in retrograde here. I'm gonna do a little test burn, see like just how fast I can slow down. Okay, and that's pretty good. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna show you my, uh, there's like a four step process here. That you can repeat over and over again. So what it did there was <clears throat> I turned retrograde I burned until my relative velocity was zero over here. And then, so what that means is that I'm not moving very, I'm basically moving at zero relative to my target. So then I point directly at it. Okay. And then I'm going to burn for like a second. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing, repeat, I go back to retrograde. You can see here I'm like hauling ass towards the target again. And you can already see from the alignment of the direction vector, my, my vector, direction vector, and the uh, velocity vector are almost lined up here. I'm basically going almost directly towards it, doing so at 10 meters per second. And it's never going to be quite exactly lined up, but you just kind of repeat the process. All right, at this point, I'm 125 meters away. I'm going to use my RCS. I'm still pointed retrograde. I'm going about one meter per second, but I can just cancel that out because I'm on retrograde. I'm just going forward. I'm just going uh, forward thruster. I'm going to get that basically at zero. So now I'm not moving at all relative to the target. I'm turning off RCS because it tends like I said, RCS and KSP2 is pretty whack right now, so I only tend to use RCS for translations and not rotations. All right, so now I'll go to target. And you can see like the sun is in my face and I'm just not having any trouble with this. I'm not having to look at the target ship and determine what its orientation is or, you know, I'm not even really, I haven't used the nav ball at all. I've basically just been going back and forth between um, retrograde and, and target orientations and then thrusting forward in reverse and watching this target meters per second. All right, so turn our CSP back on. Let's get about like three meters per second going here. And now I'm closing in directly with the target. Because I canceled out all my speed and I accelerated directly towards it, the direction vector and the velocity vector are basically just right on top of each other. And you know, if they get off, yeah, you might have to fix it. Use your RCS thrusters. Um, let me slow down here. Jesus. Should I turn off the gimbal on this? Turn that off. Sometimes that screws things up. Turn my RCS back on. 
And then yes, this time I am going to line the velocity vector back up. But I mean, that was only because I just kind of jacked it up on purpose to show you. Like if I had not done anything, I'd be perfectly aligned. I mean, this is really easy. Well, orientation is set to target, so I'll never not be pointing at the ship. This other ship is also targeted at me, and it's also pointing at me. And there are going to be some cases where you're going to have to encounter and dock with something that is not going to point at you. You know, if a space station, you don't want to orient it or whatever. But again, like this is the foolproof way of doing it. And once you understand this way, you can work backwards from it and do something more complicated, uh, like ducking with uh, something that you can't change the orientation of. All right, so there you go. Uh, I feel like that's pretty easy. And as long as you're doing those tricks, right, um, it's really just a matter of f kind of following the steps, making sure you understand the orientation of your ship with the lights, uh, circularize your orbit before you do anything else, Align plane next because it's going to make the, all the next steps easier. Uh, use a maneuver node to try to do your burn <clears throat> into the higher or lower orbit. And really what that's all that's doing is just telling you when to burn. Then follow the maneuver node, you know, pretty much exactly, and then fix it with RCS afterwards. Um, as you approach your target, turn retrograde. You know, set the, set this over here. Well, I don't have any targets now, but, you know, set, click this. No, like, many people don't know, you just click this and it changes it. Same thing with this uh, button right here. Like, you can change it to sea level or ground level. <laughs> and when you're, uh, when you're coming a, a, into a, something with high terrain, you want it to be on ground. Otherwise, it's going to give you a value that is not, that's going to kill you. So make sure this is on target, and then use that, use that retrograde button. Retrograde plus target, that enables you to cancel out velocity between you and the target, which so far I see a lot of people missing, so do that. And I think that's it. Cheers. <laughs>